Sup, Brody? I'm Leon, the Paperback Maniac, coming back at you twice in the same weekend. Wow, you know that's a signal event. Uh, and today I'm going to be doing something a little different uh, from the usual. I am going to be showing uh, the recent movies that I've, I've collected. Um, so, you know, I think if you are a regular viewer of this channel, you may have gathered by now that I am a pretty big movie buff and I own probably just as many movies as I do books, honestly. Uh, and, you know, it's something that I, you know, enjoy collecting and I don't normally, you know, I, I kept my channel a book channel uh, because that's the thing that, you know, I, I don't think is there's enough of on YouTube. There's plenty of, of channels that show off, you know, like Blu-rays and DVDs and certainly VHS. But, um, you know, I thought, why not for something a little different uh, and, you know, to just give you guys an extra a video this weekend while I have the time uh, since it is an extended weekend. I thought I'd, uh, yeah, share uh, kind of like a little horror movie update or a little horror movie haul. So um, that's what we're doing. Uh, if you normally don't like watch, I don't know, movies, I mean, I assume most of my viewers are movie fans and readers uh i think that you will like these films i think that you know especially if you like the the, sh the schlock that i discuss uh in terms of the the fiction uh these movies are totally of a piece with the books that i uh review and discuss on the channel uh cut from the same cloth definitely so i think you know even if you don't consider yourself you know both ways if you don't consider yourself a reader i think you would like these uh, the books that I talk about, and if you don't consider yourself like a movie person, I think if you read those types of books, you would certainly uh, enjoy these movies. So anyway, uh, without further ado, let's get to it. So the first movie, I'm probably going to mess up and say book a lot in this, but uh, the first movie is a documentary that uh, just kind of finally was released. It's called In Search of Darkness, and uh, this was uh, directed by David Weiner. And this thing is like a super comprehensive, how long is this thing? It's a 260 minute documentary on 80s horror. And uh, it's pretty cool. I mean, it kind of goes year by year, you know, like from 1980 all the way to 89 and kind of hits on, you know, the big uh, important uh, movies of the, of the decade. And it, it, it's it's fun. It's super fun. Uh, my only wish is that um, you know it also focuses a little on more on the obsc more obscure titles. Although it does touch on those as well. But uh, yeah, I don't know about this one. Like I don't know how easy it is to get. I, and they were they had like a limited sale. It was kind of like attached to their Kickstarter campaign. I'm not sure if they're still selling it. I mean, you could probably find it if you look hard enough. But uh, if you're into 80s horror, uh, I would recommend this documentary. If you like documentaries, it's um, it's it's super fun. Okay, uh, another movie that I uh, just recently got is uh, My Bloody Valentine, uh, Screen Factory, finally uh, putting out the collector's edition of one of the best uh, 80s slashers, one of the best slashers, I think, uh, of all time. And uh, this movie was written or was directed in 1981, uh, directed by George uh, Mihalka, is a Canadian uh, production. And, um, yeah, just like I said, one of the best slashers, um, actually is some decent, uh, newly commissioned, uh, art on the uh, slipcase uh, from Screen Factory. I'm not always a fan, I gotta say, of their newly commissioned artwork. I don't think they're nearly as good as like the, uh, the Arrow newly commissioned artwork, which you're going to see uh, a little later on. But, um, you know, but what, but I do give them props for always including the original art, and I always, you know, flip it to, to display the original art there. Um, so, yeah, that's really cool. But uh, if you haven't seen My Bloody Valentine and you're at all interested in slashers, uh, definitely check it out. It's, it's great. I recently watched this for Valentine's Day. Uh, had a blast with it. Oh, and the other cool thing, I owned the er, the, the previous like out of print Blu-ray, which had the uh, like the 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 gore scenes that had been cut from it from the M the, the MPAA made them cut to get an R rating. Uh, but in this one, it's all fully restored. Like the whole thing is seamless 4K. It's pretty amazing, uh, which is why I kind of upgraded to that one. But yeah, definitely worth it for that. Um, okay, keeping with the slasher thing, uh, here we have. Uh, the Edge of the Axe. Uh, this is a recent one that Arrow put out. Um, and this is just kind of like a great, uh, obscure uh, 80s uh, slasher, which uh, has, you know, kind of 
been getting some heat in the last year or two, finally got the release. Uh, and look what I'm talking about. This is newly commissioned artwork from Arrow, much, much cooler than, you know, the Screen Factory newly commissioned artwork. Um, I mean, it's even better than the original, right? I mean, it's like from the original cover. Uh, but yeah, this, this is a really cool, um, yeah, late 80s slasher. It was directed by uh, Jose Ramon Lor uh, Loraz. I can't read my own handwriting, uh, but he he uh, put it out under the name Joseph Bronstein. These guys were always trying to like you know make it seem like they were American, and 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 they try to make the movies uh, even if they're filmed in like Spain or Mexico, they they try to make them like look like they're uh, American set films. But um, yeah, I love this slipcover. How it also like the back looks like an old VHS. Um, kind of like back cover, but, uh, yeah, this is, this is cool. You know, it, it's no, it's no blood rage, but, but it is a really cool, like kind of like un, like kind of like newly discovered kind of like horror, uh, gem from, from that period. Okay. Uh, next up we got, uh, the prophecy, uh, this book, this book, this movie, see, I'm going to do that a lot. This movie, uh, came out in 1979, directed by John Frankenheimer. <laughs> this is the dude who like directed like the original Manchurian Candidate. So clearly he was slumming it here. But that's probably why this is like a, a much better uh, creature feature than most. I I saw this thing recently for the first time. I actually watched it on Amazon Prime and loved it so much I had to order the Scream Factory uh, Blu-ray. I haven't even opened it yet. But um, yeah, I was I was really impressed with this this. Uh, movie. I thought it was a, like a good story. I thought the subtext was, you know, relevant even today. It's it's a good subtext, but it didn't like beat you over the head with it. It didn't like, it wasn't like front and center. Like you could still like enjoy the movie. I thought, you know, the creature effects were great. I thought the acting was great. I thought the characters were good. I just really love this. If you haven't seen The Prophecy, it is on Amazon Prime uh, currently. So um, yeah, check it out. It's It's pretty awesome. Okay, uh, then I went ahead and picked up uh, the Screen Factory release of Phantom of the Opera, uh, the 1989 version, starring uh, Freddy Krueger himself, Robert England. And uh, this, um, yeah, so this one came out in 1989. This is one of those movies that I remember just seeing the VHS cover in the video store back in the day and uh, always just thinking, like, how gruesome, like, you know, I, I knew that was Freddy, and I'm like, oh, man, like, Freddy Krueger is now the Phantom of the Opera, and uh, being really intrigued. And I even rented this back in the day when I was a young kid and, um, you know, uh, watched it then. But, you know, it's 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 cool. It's, it's, um, it's not, like, great or anything, but it's got some awesome effects. It's got a cool spin on the story. Uh, this was directed by Dwight Little, who the year before uh, had given us Halloween 4, uh, The Return of Michael Myers. So, uh, yeah, pick that up. Has some cool uh, special features on there. Okay, then I got um, a uh, Vinegar Syndrome title, uh, Beyond the Door 3. Uh, this is one that I had never seen before. Uh, Vinegar Syndrome just has some of the absolute best packaging, packaging in the business. And they also, you know, are cool because they, they will provide the original art on the reverse side of the, the sleeve. But, um, yeah, this is a train horror, I guess. And uh, it was it was fine. It was cool. It had some cool uh, gore effects. Um did I say this came out in 1989? Uh, it was directed by a man named Jeff Quitney, uh, who is the dude who brought us Iced the year earlier, which is another one of those um, obscure late 80s slashers uh, that's kind of, I think, begging for a release. I don't know if there's elements for it or not. But um, yeah, this is okay for, for trains. But if you guys want a good, like a really good a uh, train set horror movie, um, I would recommend this one, Horror Express. This is not a kind of a recent acquisite pickup. I got this um, a while back, but this is this is this is where it's at. This this is awesome. This came out in 1971, I believe, or 72. Uh, it was a Spanish production. Um, it was directed by uh, Eugenio Martin, uh, but he was doing it as Gene Martin because, you know, these guys are always trying to, like, pass off as as American. But, um, yeah, man, this is – it's it's Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing, uh, and it's, it's, it's got a cool creature and just super fun. Um, I would highly recommend you to check out Horror Express. That's another one that's, pro I think, on Amazon Prime, or it was. Uh, okay, next up. 
We've got the Phantasm Collection. Uh, I am a huge fan of the first Phantasm movie, and I owned the first one on Blu-ray uh, before. I was never huge on the sequels, but I think I need to give them another shot. Um, the cool thing about this new release is that it has, for the first time, a brand new uh, 4K scan of the uncut uh Phantasm 2, the, um, the 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 version that was forced to you know had to be cut uh, to to receive an R rating, uh, so you know that'd be cool. So so to see it with with a little more gore and um, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's kind of made like a, so each movie has like a sleeve with the film and kind of like um, kind of looks like that. So that's pretty cool. I don't even think I saw like the later ones. I think I tried to watch the most recent one and I just like turned it off. It was really bad. But um, this is actually the uh, Sphere Edition, which is what it kind of attracted me to get it. So with the with the collection, you get the uh, a, like a scale replica of the uh, crystal or of the sphere. Uh, so that that's pretty cool. Um, the only thing I don't like is that they gave such a cheap, like, plastic stand. So it kind of, like, cheap, like, just makes it look worse. But, uh, yeah, but that's, you know, whatever. It's cool. Um, so you got a, a replica of the Silver Sphere uh, to go with your Phantasm collection. I could probably display that on my um, DVD rack or Blu-ray rack. Okay, uh, next up, we've got uh, one of my favorites from the 80s. Uh, this is The Hitcher. Uh, starring Rutger Hauer. Uh, this movie came out in um, 1986. It was directed by Robert Harmon, uh, and it was written by Eric Red, who we're going to see again here soon. Uh, that's the guy who wrote like Near Dark, uh, and you know I think now these days he's uh, become a horror author. It's probably like too hard to like get movies made these days. Um, so, but but he's he's a great writer, and, and as we'll see, a good director too. But the Hitcher is um, just yeah one of the one of the best. Such a good uh, kind of eighties horror thriller. And um, if you haven't seen it, th this is actually a German Blu-ray. For some reason, it's like hung up. It's, it's got like some rights issues. I think HBO owns it or something here. And um, so it's, it hasn't come out. But of course, now that I've bought uh, the import uh, Blu-ray, you know, in like two weeks from now, Scream Factory is going to announce the uh, collector's edition coming out in 2020. That seems to be my luck. But uh, whatever. If that's the case, I'll probably buy it again because I'm that much of a fan of this movie. That's really good. Okay, so speaking of Eric Red, the writer of that one, uh, here, now we're kind of getting into the 90s horror. I went on this kick of just getting a shit ton of like early 90s horror. Uh, starting off with Body Parts. Uh, this is a movie, one of my favorites of the 90s. I love this movie. It was written and directed by Eric Red, uh, and it uh, came out in 1991. Um, yeah, I think, I think it came out... Uh, like right around the time uh, that like the Jeffrey Dahmer murders were being like discovered and reported on television. And so it, that was like kind of like bad press, like a movie called Body Parts and we're discover like talking about Jeffrey Dahmer. So they kind of quietly, I don't know if they pulled it, but they definitely like pulled back on the promotion and stuff. And it just like totally like bombed. But this is a, a great, really fun movie. This definitely feels like the kinds of books that I review on the channel. And it's actually, I think, it's based on a novel, I think a French novel, um, and it's the same, like, uh, authors who wrote, like, Vertigo or, like, some Hitchcock um, movies. And I think Hitchcock originally wanted to adapt this, the, that book back in the day, but couldn't for some reason. But, uh, yeah, this one is just, it just, this one goes to such bonk, like, crazy, out, outrageous, outlandish places. If you haven't seen Body Parts, uh, definitely check out. This Screen Factory Blu-ray is stacked, by the way. It's got some amazing special features. It's got, like, an over an hour, like, an hour-long interview with Eric Red just going all over it. Um, really interesting stuff. So, you know, if you're a fan of the movie, definitely. I think it's a must, must own. Okay, continuing with the 90s theme. Uh, next up, we've got another import Blu-ray. This is Dr. Giggles. <laughs> this is a movie. Uh, this was like, uh, this came out in 92. Uh, and this was a uh, Right when I started like to go see movies like on my own, I was 10 years old. This is one that I remember going and seeing with a couple of my friends. We were obsessed with it. Um, and, uh, like we imagined it was like a huge hit. Like you don't know, like apparently this movie did not do well at all. Like clearly it, it, it was never, like there was never a sequel to it or anything, but I remember liking it. And, um, when I saw that there was another, I think German 
Blu-ray, I was like, oh yes, I got to get on that. I haven't seen this thing in years, so I'm I'm excited to revisit it. Hopefully, it holds up. I, I've heard that it's just like fun, like kind of cheesy '90s horror, which is what I remember it, you know, being. But uh, yeah, Doctor Giggles. All right, uh, okay, more '90s horror. Uh, I also yet another uh, import Blu-ray, although I think this one's region free, so it will play on you know any player. This is a Necronomicon, uh, the Book of the Dead. Uh, this uh, came out in 1993 as well, and it's a Lovecraft anthology. Uh, it's three different directors doing three uh, Lovecraft tales. We've got uh, The Drowned, The Cold, and Whispers, and it was produced by Brian Usna, you know, the producer of Reanimator uh, and um, the director of uh, Bride of Reanimator and just a lot of great stuff uh, from, from back then. And um, this is just like some just your bonkers, off the wall, crazy 90s horror. Uh, it's got just some gnarly uh, gore effects from like Steve Johnson and Screaming Mad George who worked with... Uh, uh, Brian Usna on Society, if anyone's seen that, like the shunting scene, uh, do I need to say any more? But um, yeah, this is th this is great. And I was actually surprised that for an imp for like a German release, this thing's stacked with special features. Well, you can't read that, it's all in German, but it's got like a long interview with with Brian Usna talking about sort of like his history with Lovecraft and, and, uh, and how this project, the provenance of the thing and how it like developed. And it's got interviews with like Steve Johnson about the special effects and and all kinds of stuff, all in English, of course. So that was a nice, I was not planning on that. I thought it would just be like those other ones, which I don't think have any features really. Um, but yeah, this one did have a lot of cool stuff on it as well. And, you know, great uh, kind of cool 90s horror movie. Uh, definitely evokes that time. Okay, uh, <clears throat> another 90s horror, uh, speaking of Brian Usna here, we've got Return of the Living Dead 3. This is the Vestron uh, Collector's Edition. Uh, this one... Uh, also, I think came out that same year, yeah, 93, uh, directed by Brian Usna. And I have not seen this thing in uh, a very, very long time, many years. I remember not actually liking it as much, but that was because I was comparing it. You know, the first one is one of my absolute favorite 80s horror movies. It's just like a near perfect horror comedy. Um, the sequel is not as good, but it's kind of charming in some ways. Um, but I remember feeling like this one was like kind of like bleak like i just remember it being very dour like very like kind of like it, it was not an upper although that that I, i'm gonna definitely give it another shot because um you know this is that era that i love and it's got just again just amazing just like some cra i know crazy uh gore effects uh brian usna definitely was into like that kind of crazy fantastical nightmare um, sort of hallucinatory, almost horror, the kind of stuff that I really like. So yeah, excited to kind of revisit this one. It's been, it's been a while. Okay. Uh, yet uh, another, uh, more 90, early nineties horror here. We've got Highway to Hell. Uh, this came out in 1991. It was directed by, uh, Eight De Jong. De Jong. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Uh, that's the man who brought us, uh, 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 what did he <laughs> drop dead Fred the year before that was another movie from my childhood but um, this one uh, was written by Brian Helgeland which is kind of interesting because uh, that's a guy that's a screenwriter who started out writing uh, you know kind of schlocky uh, horror movies in the 80s he wrote like 976 evil he wrote uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 4 the dream master uh, this one uh, and then he goes on to like write uh, L.A. Confidential and win an Academy Award. He writes like Mystic River and and things like that. So, uh, but it's kind of interesting that you know such an esteemed screenwriter got to start writing uh, stuff like this. But Highway to Hell is a super fun, very very '90s, early '90s um, kind of crossover '80s '90s horror movie that uh, it's cool. More fantasy fantasy based horror. Okay, a uh, couple more 90s horror movies. Uh, next, we've got The Unborn. Uh, this is one that I had never seen. I think this is also from 1991. Yeah, and um, it was directed by Rodman Flender, uh, the man who brought us such gems as Leprechaun 2 and uh, Idle Hands. And I'm only joking about the first one. I actually do love Idle Hands. And that's one that I heard uh, recently get announced that Screen Factory is doing a long overdue collector's edition of. Uh, but yeah, I think this was his, uh, Rodman Flender's first movie. And um, it's kind of like about in vitro fertilization. And uh, I think this is a Roger Corman produced uh, Concord um, 
film. But uh, yeah, thought I would uh, check that one out. Why not? And then um, kind of, oops, capping off the uh, 90s horror movies uh, is The Johnsons. And this is an interesting little flick. This is a Dutch uh, horror film from 19... Uh, what is this? 1992. It was directed by Rudolf Vandenberg. Uh, but it has a story credit by Roy Frumkes, which is interesting. Uh, he's the guy who wrote uh, Street Trash, a cult horror uh, movie from the 80s. But, um, yeah, this is an interesting film. It's it's definitely I was I was a little disappointed by it because the sonata the, the premise just sounds absolutely absurd. Uh, it's too it would take too long for me to read that. But um it uh it has an intriguing premise. It starts strong, but then it kind of like uh, languishes a little bit and it doesn't ultimately be successful. Um but uh but yeah, really intriguing idea and I do love the just the utter 90s in this of it. In fact, the uh the DVD like menu screen like when you're you know before you press play, it has the most amazing like 90s music that I just like kind of let play for like a, a very long time because I was so charmed by it. Uh, it's almost worth it uh, get this DVD for the the menu music alone because it's very, very 90s and very amazing. But uh, yeah, that's the Johnsons. I've got uh, Blu-rays just scattered, strewn across my carpet, but that's okay. Um, okay, next up, we've got a movie called Robot Ninja. <laughs> this is uh, was written and directed by J.R. Uh, Book Walter, uh, and this is the guy, this was his follow-up to The Dead Next Door, uh, which is a, was a much better film <laughs> than this one. Uh, this is obviously a newly commissioned slipcover. Uh, it is pretty cool, though, that it has an actual signature uh, from the filmmaker on the back. This is a limited print run. Uh, and then inside, you see the original um, artwork. And this is a super sleazy, <laughs> sort of gory exploitation fair uh, about a guy who it's not even about a, it's not about a robot or a ninja it's a total misnomer uh, I think in the special features it mentions that um, he, the the director was given the name robot ninja and said make a movie uh, titled robot ninja and so he just he ends up making it about this like uh, vigilante superhero basically who dresses up like uh, like that and, you know, goes after basically thugs and rapists. And that's pretty much the movie. It's, it, it's pretty bad, honestly. Uh, but um, it is a curiosity. And, you know, it was entertaining to, to watch with the commentary. <laughs> I can say that much. Um, okay, next up, we've got some Code Red uh, titles. I'm a big fan of uh, the Code Red uh, DVD, or now Blu-ray. Uh, Deep Space, this is one that I was unfamiliar with. It came out in 1988. And I wasn't sure about this one because it's directed by Fred Olin Ray, and he is definitely hit or miss, more on the miss side maybe. But um, I was actually very pleasantly surprised. I thought this was a fun little alien knockoff, um, you know, but terrestrial based, you know, set in L.A. But um, yeah, I thought it was I thought it was really cool actually, and I, I had a lot of fun with this one. So. Um, yeah, Deep Space. I would recommend if you're into like low, but like very low budget kind of cheesy '80s horror. Check it out. Okay, another one uh, that was a first time watch for me until I picked it up is uh, Spasms. Uh, this one came out in 1983. It was directed by William Fruitt, uh, and it was based on a novel actually called Death Bite, uh, which that title sounds familiar. I'm not sure if I have that or not. I have not read that one, but um, yeah, this is that is some amazing. Um, artwork right and I believe that is newly commissioned artwork there there you get some uh, some images you get the, the cool uh, yeah definitely the cool 80s bladder effects there but um yeah this one was was pretty cool there's the original um, original cover this one you know it was it, it started out really intriguing and then it kind of sagged a little bit like you know two-thirds like in the you know like right before the the final act but yeah it was um, it was interesting, and, and you know, I'm happy to have picked picked up the beautiful Blu-ray here. Um, okay, another uh, Code Red, or this might be, yeah, this was Code Red. Uh, one of the great exploitation movies of the 80s. This is Savage Streets. Uh, 
Um, this came out in 1984. Uh, it was directed by Danny Steineman and also, uh, according to IMDb, a Tom DeSimone, although he's uncredited, so I don't know if he got fired. I mean, that's usually what that means. I haven't watched, dug into this yet. It's got a shit ton of special features, though. I think it's got like three or four commentaries, interviews, and uh, so I'm, I haven't even opened this yet, but I am a fan of this movie, and I'm, look, I'm d looking forward to diving in uh, to the special features and kind of finding out more about it because uh, it's great. Got an early performance by uh, Linnea Quigley. You know, Linda Blair, of course, so yeah, Savage Streets is, is great. Okay, uh, next I picked up the uh, Criterion edition of Silence of the Lambs. Uh, don't need to say much about this. Uh, it's from 1991, directed by Jonathan Demme. Uh, just a fantastic, fantastic movie. I love this movie, uh, even if it did uh, pretty much bury horror for uh, pretty much until like Scream came along in the late later 90s. But um, yeah, it's a, it's a masterpiece of a film. Uh, dug it, dig it. Um, okay, uh, oh yeah, going back to Vinegar Syndrome for a sec, I, I also picked up the Angel Collection. Uh, this is a box set of um, three movies. There's Angel, Avenging Angel, and then Angel uh, Part 3. Uh, the final chapter. Uh, I've seen the first two, and um, yeah, the first one's amazing. The first one is just great, like early 80s LA sleaze. Uh, it's got great footage of uh, Hollywood Boulevard um, back then, which isn't like too different today, actually. It's not like Times Square, which is like completely changed. Uh, I mean, but it is different, right? I mean, there's like no, you know, there's no longer like peep shows and, uh, you know, movie palaces and, you know, bookstore like adult bookstores and stuff but uh yeah really cool part two is pretty good too i have not seen three but uh yeah if you're into sort of like 80s exploitation um and sleaze definitely check out the angel movies those are fun okay uh jesus okay got a hand uh, just a handful more here next up is a double feature uh from massacre video they've been putting out some great stuff uh we've got american rampage uh, which I actually surprisingly really liked. Uh, it's from 1989, directed by Schlockmeister David Dakota. I thought it was just a fun late 80s LA uh, kind of action movie with just was awesome, like old 80s, like squib effects and, you know, uh, was really cool. And then the second feature is Danger USA, uh, AKA Mind Trap, which also came out in 1989 and it was utter garbage. I <laughs> was not into this movie at all, but uh, really dug American Rampage. So if you're into like, kind of direct to video, like super low budget, but violent uh, late eighties action, American Rampage uh, is for you. Um, okay, and then these last few are actually not horror, uh, but uh, they're they're cool. So uh, went in and picked up the uh, Screen Factory Steelbook of Assault on Precinct 13. Um, this uh, was John Carpenter's second full length feature, I believe. Uh, it was in between Dark Star and Halloween. And uh, came out in 19, um, uh, let me see, oh, I got a page, 1976, yeah. And uh, believe it or not, this is a major blind spot for me. I've never seen this film, uh, but it was on Amazon for like 13 bucks, and so I just hopped on it, um, you know, got the steel book. I don't know own any of the other like Carpenter Steel books, but uh, I've heard really good things about this one. And um, yeah, low budget sort of like action thriller from the late seventies. Sounds cool. So yeah, looking forward to, to checking that out for sure. Okay. And then, oh yeah, going back to the nineties for a sec, I should have had this earlier. This is a movie that I was totally unfamiliar with. It's called Curdled. Uh, it came out in 1996. It was directed by a guy named Reb Braddock. Uh, and it was produced by Quentin Tarantino, and this is apparently a very Tarantino-esque movie. It's, it's kind of like a dark comedy about like a serial killer and a woman who like hooks up with him or something. I'm not I'm not totally sure. I haven't seen it yet, but it also apparently takes place in the same universe as From Dusk Till Dawn. Um, and because uh, I actually heard about it when I was listening to the the commentary track uh, on that, Tarantino mentioned this, and I was like, well, "Curdled." I was like, "What the hell? I've never even heard of that. What is that?" So um, this is actually an import DVD. I think it did have a US DVD that's out of print and like way too expensive, but the import DVD was super cheap. So it's one of the you know good reasons if you buy a lot of physical media to have a multi-region player because then you can buy 
you know, like these import stuff, and sometimes they're actually cheaper than the than the U.S. versions. But uh, yeah, looking forward to to checking out Curdled, kind of a '90s Tarantino esque dark comedy. Uh, okay, and then just two more. Had to had to get the uh, the Beverly Hills Cop three movie collection. Actually, just uh, um, the other night watched. Uh, the first one, Beverly Hills Cop, I hadn't seen it in in quite a while, and uh, just a just a great movie. This was back when Eddie Murphy was at the top of his game. I mean, he's recently had a comeback, which is I'm happy for. But uh, yeah, the the first one is fantastic. Came out in 1984. Uh, it's directed by Martin Brest. The second one is considerably lesser. Uh, came out <laughs> part two came out in 87 and was directed by Tony Scott. And then definitely the weakest li- of the three is. Uh, Beverly Hills Cop 3, uh, which came out in 94 and was directed by John Landis, the guy who's made some great movies in the past. But uh, that one, yeah, I remember actually seeing, that was the only one that I saw in the theater. I remember I was like 12 years old. I remember going with my friend to see Beverly Hills Cop 3. And even at 12, I remember being like underwhelmed by it, uh, which is saying something. But uh, I don't know. You know what? It's been many years. I'm willing to give it another shot. So uh, yeah, I had to get on that uh, Beverly Hills Cop collection. Uh, And then just to close it all off, uh, not horror, but in a sense, kind of. But de- this is the best action film of all time, in my opinion. Uh, when I saw Arrow put out a Steelbook uh, collector's edition of RoboCop, I got on it because, you know, like I said, I- I've owned multiple copies of this thing on DVD and Blu-ray, but this is the definitive edition. I mean, you can't read that, but this- that's all the stuff that's on this. Um, yeah, I mean, this movie came out yeah in 1987, directed by Paul Verhoeven. And it is a perfect movie, in my opinion. It is the best. It's, in my opinion, it's the number one action film of all time. Yes, even better than Terminator 2. Um, I just adore everything about this movie. It's perfection. And so, uh, yeah, I was happy to get this sort of like ultimate edition with just the gnarly, rad original cover art, which is why I got the steel book. There's also a box edition with newly commissioned artwork that just can't touch this. But... Um, yeah, so that's uh, that's RoboCop. So yeah, we'll close it there, guys. Uh, wow, over half an hour <laughs> for video. But uh, yeah, those are um, some recent movies that I picked up. So hope you guys enjoyed watching that. If you are movie fans and, you know, have seen any of those, I'm, I'm assuming you've seen those. But, uh, you know, drop a comment below. Let me know. Uh, we'll talk a little movies, something a little different. Um, check back next weekend for more uh, regular fare here on Paperback Mania. I'll have like another book review. And, um, you know, anyway, thanks for watching. Take it easy. Peace out.